I think also of Hannah Arendt. Do, do you know Hannah Arendt? Have you ever heard of her? You are now the third person oh, really? to mention her. Chris Hedges mentioned her, Mehdi Taleb just mentioned her, and now you, you are. But I suspect that all three of you will do so in a different context. This woman, she has the most piercing intellect. I've read her book on the Eichmann trial and the banality of evil, and it is truly an awesome piece of work, and also her book on totalitarianism. But this happens to be titled Crisis of the Republic. Living in politics, sorry, lying in politics, civil disobedience. Sorry, it's like practically black the screen on the top, so I can't read the bit. But anyway, this is so pertinent. Lies are often much more plausible, more appealing to reason than reality, since the liar has the great advantage of knowing beforehand what the audience wishes or expects to hear. He has prepared his story for public consumption with a careful eye to making it credible. Whereas reality has the disconcerting habit of confronting us with the unexpected for which we were not prepared, which frankly, I think Edward Snowden, the revelations of Chelsea Manning and all the other stuff that you know um, WikiLeaks has brought to the world and of the journalists that took advantage of it and reported on it accurately, it brought those lies out to the forefront for humanity, for those that were willing to look at it. And I think it made it very difficult for people because they found it so hard to believe that they'd been so horribly tricked. But anyway, let me go on. Under normal circumstances, the liar is defeated by reality for which there is no substitute. No matter how large the tissue of falsehood that an experienced liar has to offer, 